So now we are at part two, the conclusion of my subwoofer optimization video series. Now in the previous video, we looked at determining the best location for my two subwoofers. And I have the RBH 12 inch and the RSL 10 inch sub. And after moving them around, we determined that the back corners were the best location uh, for, for the subwoofers. Since then, I have put in many, many hours of, of uh, optimizing and calibrating these subs. And uh, rather than make this a six hour video, I'm just going to give you the shortened version. And the shortened version is that after a lot of testing and measuring using this UMic one and the REW program, I determined that the back wall was not in fact the best location for both speakers. What I ended up doing is moving the RBH sub up here to the front of the room and I put the RSL speaker on the back left corner. And, e and at that point, I was still getting terrible results. <laughs> um, and so let me show you uh, what I got. Um, I'll just click through some of these, some of these results uh, just very quickly. Uh, so yeah, like this chart here, like you can see, I mean, this is awful. Okay. Right. Not good. Not good. Uh, not good. Terrible, terrible. Uh, basically, basically, um, everything I got was just, was just not good. I could not figure out how to get these subs to play nicely together. Right. So what I did was, is I took my mini DSP two by four HD. I plugged that into my AVR and then I connected my two subs to the mini uh, DSP. And even then I, I, I went through so much like trying all these different delays, inverting, not inverting, um, adjusting gain. I went through the whole thing and, and I could, I could, show you everything that I did. But again, it would be a six hour video and it would be incredibly boring. But eventually, eventually, it literally at the moment when I was ready to give up, where I was just like, these subs cannot be uh, calibrated together. It's just not going to work. Uh, I, literally, I made one more change and like everything fell into place. It was, it was crazy. Um, and you're not going to believe this when I show you, you're going to be like, what, well, that, how did you not find that in the first five minutes? So I'm going to pull up the mini DSP, uh, interface. And so we have that here. This is what I did. This was ultimately the configuration where everything came together. Neither sub is inverted because if you invert a sub then so like I just inverted sub one and this is not inverted obviously and you can do that with with either one I've got one sub here the other sub here this is what I what I found two milliseconds of delay on sub one which is the RBH up here at the front of the room two millisecond delay returned the best result and the way, and what I did to determine that is I did one second of delay, two second of delay, three second of delay, four second of delay, and then compared the results. And let me pull those up right now in Rue, R-E-W. Okay, so I've got this, this setup uh, showing you here, overlaid. Thanks for the tip, by the way, in my previous video, somebody pointed out, they're like, show us all of the SPL charts at once. Like I say, I went through one second delay, two, three, four, and zero. So zero up through four. And you can see how the charts improve or you know kind of adjust with each one. So I'll, I'll highlight the first one here. Okay, so that's, that's the middle one right there. That's the one I ended up going with ultimately. That, this, this one that's highlighted now, that's the one that was the best. Um, and then this one, we've got, uh, not as good, obviously, um, but you can you can go through and you can see 
how just that minor change, just one second, one, I saw not one second, one millisecond of delay difference makes, makes this, this line shift. And so with each one, I determined, okay, like this one here, you can see that from 20 Hertz up through 60 Hertz, um, it's, it's looking, it, it's kind of the best, but at two seconds delay, it's, it's slightly down around 30, 30 Hertz, but it's significantly better from like 68 Hertz up to, to 90 Hertz. So that's the one I ultimately went with. Okay. So this was all pre calibration. So once I determined that having this be the, uh, the configuration. So basically nothing inverted, just two milliseconds of delay on the one sub. That was the best. Then I ran the Magic Beans and Dirac Live calibration. And at that point, this is what I got. This is it. This is what I got. And it looks pretty darn good. <laughs> we do start to get, see some drop off at about 21 Hertz. That's when things start to drop off, but it's not, it's not like a cliff. It doesn't fall off a cliff. Like it, it, it has a pretty gradual uh, decline, which is, which is good. And then at 21 Hertz, we start to see just this gradual decline, which is good. This is, this is how I set up my target curve all the way down to or sorry up to 65 hertz but it only drops from 77 hertz sorry 77 db down to 70 just under 71 db so that's about a 6 db drop which is is great now i do have this little null here and this is about a 5 db drop from here to here so not not huge, not massive. I, I might do a little more work to EQ that, but honestly, it's it's really not a big deal. And then we've got this. And then obviously right here, this is where we hit the crossover point. And that's why we see this start steep drop off because um, this is where this is roughly where the crossover point is set uh, for the mains to, to um, and the other speakers to, to pick it up. So this is... This looks really good. This looks really, really good. And like I say, I was like this close to giving up. I mean, I had, I had been just, just, if I had any hair left, I would have been pulling it out. Um, I was, I was getting a little frustrated, uh, but then everything just clicked into place. So I think the takeaway from this is don't be afraid to get in to your system and start messing with stuff, right? Like move subs around, try different delays, try different inversions, try, you know, in, uh, you know, whether it be zero degrees or 180 degrees on your, on your face. Uh, don't be afraid to, to try these different things. Um, obviously at each point taking measurements so you can, can see what, what changed. Um, but as you go through this process, eventually you're going to find the right formula and and once you once you find the point where you're like ah i'm getting close this is i'm i'm in the neighborhood then you start making those slight incremental changes in each direction to determine which which configuration is the best so like once once i found that uh i think i think it was 4 four milliseconds of delay. I tried four milliseconds of delay and I was like, oh, that that actually looks pretty good. So then I went to five, five milliseconds of delay. And I was like, oh no, that's clearly going in the wrong direction. So then I just went up to three, then I went up to two. I was like, two is looking really good. Let's try one, one, eh, not as good. And then zero, much worse. And so I found that sweet spot of two, two milliseconds of delay. So that's kind of the takeaway is just kind of, move stuff around, try different things. If you have multiple subs and you want to be able to adjust the delay and uh, do that fine tuning, the mini DSP is super helpful. Um, I would say almost critical, for sure critical for me because the Onkyo TX-RZ50 does not have 
independent subwoofer outs. It has two subwoofer outs, but they're not independent. So you can't independently tweak each sub. It requires something like a mini DSP to be able to individually adjust each subwoofer. Um, so anyways, I'm really excited about uh, where I've been able to get things. It's looking really good and it's sounding even better. I was just like previously, this system sounded amazing. Now, now that I've got this, it is, oh, I, I don't wanna use the word perfect because nothing is perfect, but dang, it is close. So thanks for watching.